Well, I showed the sneak peek of the new hole going together with the new cage from the old 146 and the new motor. That was just a sneak peek, but now it's time to start actually fitting that stuff. So that's what this video is all about. Here we go. So this boat is completely different design, different. It's wider, it's taller, everything than the 146. So I was kind of concerned about where, I didn't really know where this roll cage was gonna land in here. And honestly, I'm super stoked because this thing is actually already just sitting in. I, I don't really see any major modifications that I have to do to make this work. However, we got to figure out the fore and aft. Where's everything going to go? And everything is essentially based off the pump. So um, before I start doing any, this all was just literally just sat in here. So before I do anything fixture wise and permanent with all that stuff, I got to figure out the location of the pump, which is already in here. However, um, as you can see, I the, the flex plate really, I snug that up right up against the back of the pump. And here's the pump that came out of here. So usually, literally, the flex plate goes right up against within about a quarter inch of here. So I got to get this pump. This pump isn't going in here, but this is what's called a pump block. And as, a, as you can see, the pump is nice and flat, but there's a V to the bottom of the boat. So this is essentially an adapter plate that that allows the pump to sit in the very bottom of the boat and it also sets the depth of everything for your grate that for the uh, intake opening down underneath of here and this thing is essentially a picture frame so my first step in getting all this i got to get this pump block out of here the whole thing already came out that's why there's the glue marks in here but when it came out it's stuck it's glued on both sides it's glued to the bottom of the boat and it's glued to the pump block so it came out like this now i got to get that thing off of there and it's a marine adhesive 5200 it is tough stuff so i got to get that off of there and then i'm going to put the pump block in there and that's going to set the engine fore and aft so as soon as i get that in there i know where the engine is going to be and then i'm going to kind of figure out where the roll cage and everything else is going to be for clearance so I'm going to show you this process. It's going to take some heat. It's going to take some wedges. I'm hoping it just pops off because I already put a bunch of heat breaking it out of the boat, but we'll see. So here we go with that. I'll uh, turn the time lapse on and start getting some heat into it and wedges and uh, try to avoid using screwdrivers because those have been known to chip or break some of the, uh, the casting. So I can't really use that. So I'm just using plastic wedges to try to pry that apart. Here we go. holy crap that one was a tough one it did not want to budge so what i typically do when i'm taking these off i and i kind of had to gall it but i try to just start a corner just to get a little gap and there was you can tell by just by the evenness of the glue on this that there this thing was super um it was just on there tight so i was just focused on one corner and just try to pry a screwdriver in there just to get it to open up a little bit and that took forever. I just kind of kept focusing on that. Once you kind of get a corner, you can work the wedges. Hope that all turn out in the time lapse. But I'll just kind of work down a side, work down a side, and try to wedge that thing apart. But dang, this thing was stubborn. So <laughs> I'm glad it came off. It's time to clean this up. This is this is the whole pump block right here. I'll show you how this thing is sits in the boat. <laughs> That sits in the boat and now you can see right there that that's going to set where my flex plate goes because it says we have clearance issues with the pump but that's going to pretty much be it set that thing in there and then we'll get to uh get to going but i got to clean all the glue off of this and uh get to work not a whole lot to show from the cleanup but i will get back to you when i go to uh, put that in the boat and start moving the motor around so you can see what that's like it always feels good when it's done but that is a pain in the ass <laughs> like it's just time consuming and you you've got as soon as you hear that glue start to like break you're like aha 
I got it. It's, it's like when you're chopping down a tree or whatever, and it just starts to crack. I'm like, okay, here we go, making progress. But man, that took, took a while to get that out of there, but time to clean it up and we'll throw it in the boat. There was a comment on the first build video that these are extremely simple machines, and that is a true statement in the fact that there's not a lot of moving parts. There's no transmission, there's no tires, there's no brakes, there's no steering linkages and all that kind of stuff. So yes, in theory, they're extremely simple uh, machines. However, they're also extremely sensitive to minute adjustments. And I alluded to that in one of my videos where I talked about the, the nozzle. If you narrow that nozzle up one millimeter, it makes a huge difference in your steering. Or if you cant it up, one turn in on those set screws, that makes a huge difference in the top speed and the bow down and the steering and all that stuff. So yes, they are simple machines, but tiny little things make them difficult so one of the big things is is your center of gravity or essentially your your point of balance so where along the boat is you know where's the bow down where's the bow up so generally speaking your center of gravity or balance point is somewhere right along the front edge of your engine plus or minus i don't know three or four inches i'm not going to tell all my secrets because that's the stuff that's hard to get just right in a boat. So these are all, I'm not giving any dimensions on any of my stuff, but uh, this is basically where we're starting. I got the pump block all cleaned up. You can see the nice tight gap down there between that and the flex plate. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp the engine in here. This is not final, but I just wanted to get that position because I wanna start working with the roll cage, the steering, the seats, all that stuff. Some issues that you start to face when you're just swapping from one boat to the other is right here is a prime example. Our fuel pump is actually sitting on the rail right here. So I'm gonna have to clear notch that out to make sure that that clears. Cause right now this thing is, there's no, it's not sitting on that. It's actually resting on the fuel pump. That's why I still have it hanging off of the hoist. So little things like that, nothing too major. Um, we clear the, the roll cage foot and the, and the fuel pump clear. So I'm going to kind of terminate here today. I got the, my biggest thing was getting the pump block off of the pump and then position the motor. The pump block is positioned, the motor is positioned, it's clamped in here. So now I know that this is where I want to go. So everything else is going to um, get anchored off of those positions. So tomorrow I'm going to start working on the roll cage mounts. Is it not focusing over there on the roll cage mounts up over there? Get some of those in going, get some of these mounts uh, drilled and bolted into the engine rails and, uh, and start working on putting all these things back together. So pretty happy with this and uh, I'll do a little bit more time lapse tomorrow because I'm gonna have to uh, pull the roll cage out to get some of those brackets in there. I went out and took some measurements from the um, from the engine mounts off of the 146 and I just measured up where those those lines are going to mark up with the roll cage so I uh, put the cage in here getting ready and I'm going to drill these out and get the cage in but that is going to be the final resting piece of the uh, cage so here I'll go I'll start drilling those out and at least get those the two um, engine bearer bars in and the cage in, and then I'm gonna start working on the four corners. So got the center uh, roll cage mounts into the engine bearers, got those bolted in. I just snugged them up just so the cage won't move. So this is planning where it's gonna go. Now I'm working on the four outer posts. So got the center ones in, two bolts, and then two, these are just kind of holding in position. But this is where I'm at with these are the mounting brackets off of the 146. Because this engine bearer sits a little bit taller than the other boat, this corner post now is sitting just a little bit high off the ground. So if I were to reuse this now, that is going to be sitting up off of the off of the bottom of the boat like that. So the only way to really fix that would be to short cut this tube off and shorten it so the whole thing drops down. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to rebuild a corner mount for these rear corners. 
The good news is, as I hit my head on the uh, engine hoist, the good news is the front ones worked just fine because it the way it's, it sits down here on the ground so or on the bottom of the boat. So that one is nice and done and it is uh, bolted to the roll cage. Now I just got the same thing, do a transfer punch into those two holes and that gets countersunk up through the bottom of the boat. Try not to weld too much into the boat if you can, so if you can do through bolts better. So I'm gonna work on uh, getting those corners done because those are easy. Those come right, those brackets are coming right out of the 146, and then I'm gonna have to make new brackets for those rear corners, but going pretty good. So let me know in the comments, how much detail do you guys want? Do you wanna see me drilling the, the holes in the roll cage? Like the time-lapsing kind of times all together, but. I don't want to like, I don't know, condescend or make it make it too simple, but let me know how much detail y'all want to see in this build. So I, it's not that hard for me. I got my little um, tripod thing here. It's not that hard to just turn the phone on and record it, but uh, it's up to you all uh, how much you want to see, how much you don't want to see. If you want, to, want me to kind of compress it so you see the big picture stuff, or do you want to know the nitty gritty of, of why my brackets don't line up? Like I need to know so I can either cut it out or doesn't really matter to me. So let me know in the comments what you guys want. mounts are in the brackets that uh, actually bolted to the bottom of the boat stainless steel 3 8 um, that are countersunk through the through the bottom of the boat Let's see if I can show that where are those uh, 316 or 3 8 rather stainless steel countersunk so now I'm on to build these rear brackets back here I'm actually gonna have to get some 3 8 played out and uh, build those or weld those up so here we go on that Here is one of the rear brackets. Just made this up. The way I do it, this is 3 8 stuff. I do not have any means to bend 3 8 plate. It's just that's that's really thick stuff to be to bending at all. So <laughs> one of my very early videos, I talk about this saw. I call it the meat saw for obvious reasons. This thing is dangerous, not OSHA approved by any means, but it is a crucial part of boat building. And the way I did that is I put a, a gouge and actually kind of angled it about a 45-ish, put a, put a slice through there with the meat saw and then put it over in the vise, bent it over. And then I welded the face of that. And then when you're looking at the that, like... There's, you have to cut out quite a bit of that material to be able to bend that 3 8 that far. So I don't think that there was a whole lot of material left. So I back gouged the back side of this and put weld back there as well. I'm not too worried about all this little cleanup stuff. It's under the boat. You don't need to see, it's, it's really not going to bother me. But that is, so this is a 3 8 uh, roll cage mount welded on both sides matches the perfect angle to the of the boat hole to the cage so that is that there's one i'm not going to bother showing you the second one going in but i will show you really quick how what we're looking at over here it's still kind of warm so i'm using my glove but anyway that's going in there like so and uh, that's again through bolted down through and the reason that i round these corners um very the exact same reason that i don't weld my everybody's like man you don't weld your engine bears to the transom no i don't because that is a sharp edge i leave it short and with aluminum when it flexes you're gonna you very have a very potential of pushing uh, a hole through your transom same thing on something like this if i were to leave that a nice sharp angle 
and then you take a hit, it's very easily that that, that sharp angle could put, punch a hole or dent or whatever through your bottom plate. So that is my reason for rounding those off. None of that stuff is in the rule book or anything like that, but that's just kind of basic structural stuff. That's that's a big one. I, when I see guys welding those, I'm like, you don't get any extra strength out of that. It's not required. And all you're doing is really weakening the transom by doing that, but each to their own. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, but most part I don't. But anyway, I'll build the other one. And uh, this cage is going to be in the boat. So we got the pump block out, got the motor position which then set the cage position and we got it, we're gonna have it anchored in all six spots. So this is a pretty good start to this thing. Oh, uh, everything is gonna go off of the roll cage, really, cause like the in, the, in the engine position. So the fuel tank, the seats obviously already gonna be in there. You can see with my steering, this is the steering that we had in the 146. I sat in the boat and I like it where it's at, it's perfect. But I'm going to have to, I'm going to cut, this is all the old stuff. I'm going to cut this out. It was a totally different roll cage, totally different seats that were in here. So this was all part of the steering. Those are going to come out. I'm probably, I am going to have to put some sort of a support back there. But those are just kind of the cleanup things. But this boat is going to go together pretty quick because it is so modular. The other builds, not so much. Those are going to, I'm going to have to build a completely new roll cage for the 146. And the 907 is going to be completely from scratch build up. So this one, it's going fast. It's deceptive because it is all modular. And I'm really just stealing stuff out of one boat to do this. So anyway, I think I will wrap this video up. We'll get it up online uh, probably Sunday. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Like I said, let me know in the comments how much detail do you guys want to see here? Because I can go... Kind of like I'm doing. If you like it, say, cool, that's, that's a good amount. I could do more. I can, like, you could watch me build two brackets instead of one bracket or watch me drill more holes. But I need to know how much detail you want to see. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.